We'd all love to be wearing the high-end fashion brands, but most of us just can't afford it. And perhaps after hearing some of the stories today, you might feel a little better about not being able to afford it. Shocking facts about luxury brands will be a mix of both amazing and almost unbelievable stories about some very well-known brands. Number 22, Fact or Fiction The movie The Devil Wears Prada, starring Anne Hathaway and Meryl Streep, is a film about the experience of an assistant working for a diabolical magazine editor. It's a tongue-in-cheek movie with reports suggesting that it was based on a real-life experience of an assistant working for Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Winter. She, however, took it in stride and even attended the New York premiere of the film wearing, wait for it, Prada. Number 21, special thanks to Burberry, because without them, we wouldn't have our beloved trench coats. This is one staple that is found in pretty much anyone's closet, male or female, and it was thanks to Thomas Burberry that we got them in the first place. It was his invention that brought about gabardine, a fabric you find in most trench coats. This fabric used to protect the soldiers from rain in the battlefield during the late 1800s and thereafter went mainstream. Number 20, better with time. Now here's a reason to go out and buy a Chanel 2.55 bag because each day they get more and more expensive. This double flat bag is a classic and more than likely one of the most famous bags in the world. Demand for these beauties increases daily and right now it will cost you $4,900 for a medium one, but who knows what it will cost you tomorrow or next week. Number 19, maybe he's born with it. Michael Kors is an American designer who has his own company called Michael Kors Holdings Limited. He sells anything from menswear to womenswear and everything in between. His talent came through strongly from a young age and when he was five years old, designed his mother's wedding gown for her second wedding. Number 18, keep it classic. It was 1924 when Burberry came up with the world's most recognizable print, the Nova check. This trademarked plaid design comes in standard beige with black, white, and red checks. Many of the old Hollywood stars wore this brand, including Humphrey Bogart and Audrey Hepburn. It was only trademarked in 1967 when they introduced an entire range of accessories with this well-known print. Number 17, size counts. Just ask Abercrombie's CEO, Mike Jeffries, who came under fire when asked to give an explanation as to why his brand doesn't make sizes XL or XXL or anything over the size of 10. You may or may not agree with his reasoning, but he says that he doesn't want overweight people wearing his brand because the clothes are meant for cool or good-looking people, and that if you're overweight, as he suggests, it won't do his brand any favors. He continues by saying his clothing is designed with sex appeal in mind, which is why even their staff are picked on looks. He wants the brand to excite people and not turn dull in their eyes. Number 16, fly me to the moon. Playtex have a lot more going for them than just being excellent makers of bras. They can be credited with the creation of the spacesuits that were worn by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on their infamous trip to the moon. Number 15, when in France. Apparently, one of the most purchased items by Chinese tourists in France is an original Louis Vuitton, as they're so much more affordable in France than they are to buy in China. Number 14, a winter essential, bomber jackets. We often wonder how we would get through a winter without one. Giorgio Armani created the first ever bomber jacket and it was designed in 1970. Number 13, a little inspiration. It was by pure chance that the Hermes Birkin bag came into being, a bag that was inspired by Jane Birkin, a gorgeous French actress who randomly met Jean-Louis Dumas, who had recently taken over the company on a flight. She accidentally dropped her Hermes Birkin diary and complained that the diary didn't hold all her bits and pieces and headbags didn't have enough pockets. So while he couldn't fix her diary problem, he knew he could fix her purse problem. And he did, and he came out with the Hermes Birkin bag, a large, overpriced luxury handbag. Number 12, stop doing it. It's not only Nike that are guilty of this, but they are the ones that have come to the forefront of late due to the fact that they utilize sweatshops to manufacture their merchandise. The situation is ongoing and several agencies and independents are working closely with Nike to ensure that conditions in the factories are of a higher standard. Usually what happens in these sweatshops is that work areas are tiny, air quality very poor, work is repetitive and hours are very long with many underage workers being employed. There have been reports of abuse too, but Nike are working hard to improve the situation, although they have a long way to go, as two-thirds of factories still do not meet the current standards. Number 11, Money Talks. Did you know that currently the world's most valuable fashion brand is Louis Vuitton? The company's worth is sitting on $23 billion. 
Number 10. Quality versus Quantity While we're on the topic of Louis Vuitton, do you know why their bags are so durable? They go through a number of durability tests before you even purchase it. Each bag gets filled with roughly 8 pounds of weights and then gets dropped 20 inches several times a day over 4 days. The material goes through ultraviolet treatment to ensure fading doesn't happen, and the zippers are opened and closed 5,000 times to ensure they're in perfect working condition. They really take their bags very seriously. Number 9. Look and you will find Paul Smith is a British fashion designer who gives his clients a little hidden treasure in every outfit he sells. You can often recognize his clothing by their multicolored stripes, and you'll find the treasure on the inside of the clothing. There will either be some eclectic prints, totally different from the print of the clothing, a secret pocket, or an amazing pattern in a place you wouldn't expect it. Just look out for it. Number 8. Thinking Outside the Box Chip Wilson is the founder of Lululemon, a staple for Canadian college students and yogis around the world. The brand is always growing and expanding, and Wilson has been known for his rather, um, unusual ideas. The brand got into hot water in 2007 with their Vita C collection, which claimed that because the clothing line was made using seaweed fiber, the seaweed would be absorbed by the skin and pass on amino acids and vitamins. The Textile Labeling Act put a stop to that claim, and they had to relabel the entire range. More problems occurred in 2013 when they tried to cut costs and made their pants too sheer, leaving some customers in highly embarrassing situations. Number 7. Stamp of Approval Not everyone can be an haute couture designer. In order to make the cut, designers have to be approved by the Chamber of Syndical, which is the governing body of fashion in Paris. The rules and regulations are extremely strict, and there are only 14 that have been approved, which include Givenchy, Christian Dior, and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Surprisingly, Giorgio Armani remain unapproved. Number 6. World's First G-Star Raw is a Dutch designer clothing company that was founded in 1989 by Joosken Tilburg. It's this company that became the first in the world to make denim from recycled ocean plastic. They had Pharrell Williams on board with the concept when they introduced Raw for the Oceans in 2014. Number 5. Jack of All Trades a name very familiar to the fashion industry is Karl Lagerfeld. He has his own name brand, designs for Chanel, is the director of Fendi, and has collaborated with many well-known brands, including H&M. The H&M collaboration was exceptionally popular, but it was the first and the last time he would do work for H&M. Why is that? He was so angry that the clothing was made available to size 16, as he only wants his clothing worn by glamorous model-type girls. Kind of odd, because he was there when all the patterns were being cut and put together. H&M demanded a public apology from Lagerfeld, but whether that took place, we don't actually know. Number 4. Ashes to Ashes This is not our first fire story today, and we'll share another with you shortly. Any Louis Vuitton products that are not sold are returned to the factory in France and burned. They do that to maintain the value of the brand's products. Number 3. Each one is a masterpiece. Judith Lieber is the handbag designer who brought you the Minaudier, although Wiki gives credit to Van Cleef and Arpel, who allegedly saw Florence Gold tossing smaller items into a tin box on an outing in 1934 and went on to design the mini purse. Judith Lieber is said to be buying back all of her little purses and displaying them in her own museum. Minaudiers are small handbags made of a stiff material, often encrusted with jewels and pretty finishings. This brand also comes in intriguing statement designs like a watermelon or a pineapple. Number 2. Where There Is Smoke We briefly mentioned about Louis Vuitton products being burned earlier, and it seems they are not the only ones. Burberry have been doing the same thing and were recently exposed for burning $116 million worth of product. It's said to be a common practice in the industry done to retain the brand's exclusivity. Burberry shareholders were not happy about this and said they and others deserve to be given the opportunity to purchase products at slashed prices. Number 1. Dress for Success H&M are leaders in current popular fashion, clothing meant to be worn for a season and then discarded of. This is very bad for the environment, obviously, as the water and resources needed to manufacture the items are exorbitant. In 2011, Greenpeace looked at many popular brands such as Abercrombie & Fitch, Adidas, and Calvin Klein and called their report Dirty Laundry. H&M, for example, were using the services of Young or Textile Group's factories who were found to be releasing chemicals into the Pearl and Yangtze River deltas. H&M tried their best to improve the public image of the factory but didn't quite manage what they hoped to achieve. 
they did introduce a garment collecting program in 1,500 of their stores where people would receive a clothing discount if they brought in donations of clothing. The clothing wasn't donated to charity but went through a fiber recycling program in order to reduce costs for future clothing produced by H&M. They have also been accused of copying runway looks, which they haven't denied and said they believe they're doing everyone a favor as not everyone can afford runway looks. But through H&M, they can. However, still doesn't help the environment. We hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Did you learn anything new? Are you going to continue buying from these brands? Let us know in the comments below and remember to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more daily content. Thanks for watching.